introduced the concept of state estimation, we showed a number of parallels between state estimation and um, state feedback. Um, in particular, state feedback, we, we choose a gain matrix K that is multiplied by our state in order to produce the input. Um, and in state estimation, we need to um, design or have also an estimator gain matrix that allows us to um, force the estimate to track uh, the observations that we get from the system. And so um, what that boiled down to, again, very similar to our state estimation, or, state, or sorry, our state um, feedback, is the fact that in state estimation, we get an equation that looks like this, where we require the stability of this A minus LC matrix. So the closed, kind of the closed loop uh, analogous uh, matrix is this A minus LC, where this is the um, estimation error dynamics. And what we would like to do is we'd like to stabilize that because if the estimation error goes to zero, that means that our state and um, our estimate are nearly the same thing. So um, it makes sense that we may want to place the eigenvalues of the matrix A minus LC in order to guarantee the convergence and stability of this estimation error. And so there, are, um, when you get into this more deeply, there are some interesting um, discussions about the trade-offs between tracking this very tightly and being sensitive to oscillations and noises and things like that. But in principle, um, what we'd like to go through now is the, is the notion of pole placement for this estimator gain matrix. And so um, one of the ways to see that is the fact that if we're interested in the eigenvalues of this matrix A minus LC, one of the most fundamental um, identities in terms of transposes and eigenvalues is the fact that the eigenvalues of A and the eigenvalues of A transpose are in fact the same. And so uh, one thing that we could do is we go ahead and take the transpose of this A minus LC matrix and get A transpose minus C transpose L transpose. Remember, taking the transpose of a product swaps them. And so one way of thinking about this is the fact that this is in fact the same thing as doing this, where A, A transpose becomes A in the state feedback case, minus C transpose becomes B, and L transpose becomes K. And so this is a nice way of making a direct connection between um, state estimation and state feedback. And it's actually because of this that MATLAB really just has one, um, one set of commands to use for pole placement, both for state feedback and for um, state estimation. So similar to um, our discussion of pole placement for state feedback, in state estimation there are also um, very similar canonical form that makes this calculation a lot easier. And so we'll call that observer canonical form. And this again is very similar to uh, controllable canonical form. What you're noticing is the fact that the role that used to be the B vector is now played by the, the C vector. And so in this case, we have a one in the first element of the C matrix and zeros uh, throughout the rest of that row. Again, since we're dealing with a single input and single output case. Um, then the A matrix in observer canonical form is, is essentially the transpose of the, um, the one that we observed in the control canonical form. So it's just flipped a little bit. And we'll see in the next slide why that makes the, the uh, state estimation uh, pole placement problem quite easy. So again, our objective is to place the poles of A minus LC. In this case, remember that L is a column vector that has entries L1 through LN. And these are what we'd like to pick in order to guarantee that the eigenvalues of A minus LC are what we want them to be. So we're gonna be placing those poles. Um, and so recall that the C matrix looks like this, and this nice structure, when you multiply that by this L matrix 
effectively creates a matrix that looks like L1, L2, dot, 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 Ln, and then zeros everywhere else. And so this, this is a way of creating a very similar matrix to the one before, such that when we add this matrix of LC to the A matrix here, then all of these terms, these L1, L2 through Ln, add nicely, or so in this case subtract nicely, onto the first column. And so essentially all the dynamics is all captured in this first column, and then we have this off-diagonal ones. And so again, I'm not going to go through the, the derivation of this, but it would be useful to double check this on small examples, is the fact that we can directly go from this uh, this expression to the eigenvalues um, where each of these terms, essentially the negative of each of these terms, appear as coefficients in this expansion. And so then it's a, simply a matter of comparing that to the characteristic equation of the poles that you want to have and equating what value of L1, L2 through Ln achieve coefficients uh, that you want. And so um, you can see that very much the same, um, same overall framework is there. It's, uh, it's just kind of shifted uh, mainly by transposes and exchanging of B and C vectors. Um, one, uh, one thing to note is, is that when we're talking about picking poles, uh, remember that picking those poles represents the speed of the response of the system. And so if we want our estimate to be close to our, um, our state, we'd like that to be the case so that we could use estimate-based feedback uh, that we talked about before. So instead of feeding back u is equal to k times x, we'll feed back u is equal to k times x hat as a replacement. And if that's the case, we'd like um, x hat to converge to x rather quickly and possibly faster than we use for control. So for that reason, oftentimes we use, if we're going to design both k and l, we're going to pick poles that are faster in the estimate um, case so that our estimate converges more quickly than we're injecting our control. Again, similar to um, pole placement for state feedback, um, the estimator pole placement is quite easy if you're already in observer canonical form. If you're not already in observer canonical form, it becomes just a little bit of a, a trick in order to change, again, to design a transformation matrix T that's going to take you from something that's not in observer canonical form to a new set of states in which um, the system is in observer canonical form. In this case, we can uh, we construct the observability matrix, which is um, the matrix C, CA through CA to the n minus one. And again, we're specifically taking um, the case where we really only just have one output. So each of these will be a row vector in this overall matrix. And then if this O is invertible, then in this case we can compute the last column of T inverse. So there's a couple differences, but overall the structure here is similar. So here we're going to compute T inverse, so not T, but T inverse, and we're going to do so by multiplying O inverse by this matrix 0, 0 through 1. And, uh, and then we can construct all the other columns of T by multiplying by increasing powers of A. Then, of course, we're going to um, do the pole placement once we have the um, observer canonical form, and then it'll be up to us to then transform that from the observer canonical form back into the original variables. So observer canonical form was in state variable z, then we move map back into state variables x. Um, or the other alternative, just like we said before, is to simply use the exact same um, procedure um, for state feedback, but with A replaced by A transpose and B replaced by, by minus C transpose. Here we have a, an example uh, based on what we, uh, the example that we saw before with this quadcopter with two lost propellers. Um, here we're going to be computing the observability matrix and checking its rank. 
So in this case, uh, the observability matrix is computed by writing down the C uh, row vector, and then the row vector that's given by C multiplied by A, C multiplied by A squared, up to N minus one uh, powers of A. And in this case, N is again four, because we have four states. So we go up to power C times A to the third. Um, so first we write down C, so that's this first row. Uh, there's another shortcut when you're multiplying and C has some nice sparsity. In this case, what you'll notice is that each time you multiply A by this vector, it's going to, this, this zero is going to multiply this whole row, this zero is going to multiply this whole row. So this sparse one here in the third row, third column, uh, keeps the third row of A. And so you can double check that through complete matrix multiplication, but you'll see that that's the case. And so C times A just is the third row of A. Similarly, this next row is the third row of A squared, and this one here is the third row of A cubed. And so now we have this matrix, and now we can either through row elimination or through inspection, we can determine uh, whether this is full rank and invertible. In this case, uh, we can see that this vector and this vector are linearly independent. Um, and then this vector is also linearly independent from those because you can't rewrite. Uh, so this one, you can take care of the third entry. This one allows you to take care of the first entry. This one allows you to take care of, say, the fourth entry, and then ensuring that these two vectors are not linear combinations of each other, that allows us to say that this is also linearly independent. So again, if that inspection process is, is not obvious to you, then you can use that elimination method. But this shows that, um, that this has rank four and tells us that this is fully observable. Now we'll take a quick look at an example where we'd like to place the poles of an estimator. So this is our system with A, B, C. In this case, we're lucky. It's already an observer canonical form. We will get some practice on changing to both observer and um, controller canonical form. Um, but in this case, it's already there. So it just boils down to calculating out uh, the characteristic equation. And so that means that this is minus a1, this is minus a2, this is minus a3, and then that allows us to directly write down these um, quantities, these coefficients. And if we want estimation error dynamics that has eigenvalues at minus 1 and minus 1 plus or minus i, then we can construct that characteristic equation by writing down these terms, these three terms corresponding to minus 1, um, minus 1 minus i, minus 1 plus i. And then uh, multiplying all this out gives us the characteristic equation that looks like this. In order for this first coefficient to be 3, L1 has to be 0. In order for this coefficient to be 4, this term has this uh, this term has to be four, so L two has to be five, and for this term to be um, two, that coefficient, then L three here has to be six, and so um, that is a way if it's already in observer canonical form to compute the entries of the observer uh, gain matrix. Um, the other alternative is to go ahead and use MATLAB, and in this case you can use the place command. Here MATLAB is, um, is meant to be uh, used for state feedback, again with the knowledge that you can always take the transpose of A and uh, the transpose of C to do uh, pole, pla uh, pole placement for the estimator design.